so throughout the book, you describe both. Uh, you describe Trump as a sort of explicitly uh, anti-globalist protectionist uh, project, and at times in the book, you describe Brexit in similar terms as a sort of insular, inward-looking rejection of globalization. Um, but on the other hand, frequently throughout the book, you also describe Brexit as a as a you know, a globalist project itself, a sort of you know a sort of quest for hyper-globalization, deregulation, uh, the Singapore model, uh, etc. Um, in what sense is Brexit both protectionist and globalist? Well, I think both Brexit and Trump ha are, have released very contradictory forces and quite contradictory passions. So, in the case of Trump, Trump is a, an anti-globalizer, denouncing globalization and free trade, but he also is about America winning. He's about America dominating the larger world. So, he wants to put up walls um, but says it's time that we started winning and winning again. And he explicitly is against uh, what Reagan called the city on the hill, which opened its doors to those who came. The, the America is the image of, of somewhere that the world wanted to be part of and which would allow immigrants in. And Trump is, has uh, reneged on that promise and that image of America. Uh, but it it also involves an American retreat from the world, which is contradicted by his attempt to try and impose American will, whether it's on Afghanistan or the Middle East or the Far East or on China. So there I think the kind of contradictions, the tensions of a Trumpist project are, are pretty evident. Um, and I think everybody feels that a disaster is on the way and that the Republicans around Trump are doing what they can to mitigate the crash that is still to come. Brexit on this issue is explicitly different from Trump. And one of the points that I try and show is that when May went, rushed off to see Trump right at the beginning, she was for global Britain and free trade, and he is a anti-free trade uh, and then they want to do a free trade agreement with the United States and then, you know, but how do you do that without deregulating the markets at this kind? And if you deregulate here, then you're not going to be able to do, have free trade with the rest of the European Union. In terms of the popular feeling behind Brexit, I think there was a, a sense that by the sort of, if you like, by the leadership, by the Brexiteers, of this idea that we could be both independent of Europe, who was somehow or other a colony of Europe, and mimic America, become a global country again. And they use this phrase, global Britain, which is a kind of code for Great Britain. They feel just saying we're Great Britain is obviously a little bit uh, pushing their luck and opening up to scorn and looking too competitive so they're using this phrase, global Britain, this is the Brexiteer phrase which the Prime Minister has adopted, um, to adopt the model, the Hannah model, if you like, of, of free trade all round. But they face a big two uh, problems here. One is that the promise of trying to bring control is a promise of withdrawal from world markets and in particular, a withdrawal from the European Union, which is itself an enormous free trade area. So they're not, they're not sure, this is why there's this, the, the Conservative Party at the moment is, is, is another car crash. Uh, and May is being martyred, if you like, on the cross of two different forces. One of them is saying, in order to save British business and to save trade and to save financial services, we have to stay within the regulated area of the European Union. We need to leave and gain what control we can, but we must pay in different ways to stay close to that because that's where our business and our future lies. And the other is saying, well, there's no point in Brexit if you're going to do that. We've got to have a, a, be able to deregulate. We've got to be able to trade freely with the rest of the world and we've got to be able to pay that price. Um, which would be a very considerable price in the short term in order to be a country free of the, uh, the regulatory influence of the European Union. But the promise of Brexit was 350 million a week for the NHS. The promise of Brexit was an immediate profitable return. It wasn't saying, you know, it's going to be 
blood, sweat and tears for 20 years before we can, we can really show people what we're capable of. And so the government is caught on, on that process. So I think that it's, they are both in play. And I think that so far as the um, British people are concerned, I think they're not, uh, I think most of those who voted to leave are not, I don't think it was a racist vote in the way that the vote for, much of the vote for Trump was. It was certainly permissive of racism, the vote for Trump, and permissive of a man who was a racist and a bigot. And I think that there's some element of that in Farage, a sort of our mini Trump. Um, but, but it was a much less one here. And I think the, there isn't the sort of uh, antagonism or the sense of threat of Europe. And one of the, I think, quite malevolent aspects of the way the Brexit vote was run on this is that the, you may remember there were those maps suddenly shown which showed Turks, you know, are next door to Syria and therefore terrorists flooding through the European Union to come here and steal our welfare benefits. You know, uh, and there's no prospect of Turkey joining the European Union and free movement is about within the European Union. But it was the, the notion was uh, um, projected that membership of the European Union was somehow open the doors to complete immigration from everywhere. And in that sense, you know, we had to protect ourselves, which, which is a, a that was, I think, as, as great a dishonesty and as, as and the most wicked dishonesty of the, the, the as I say in my book, the, I think the Remain campaign has some very profound dishonesties going back to the Iraq war. But that particular dishonesty was one uh, which was really, really shameful. And it, it, it played on people's fears. But I don't think there's a push in this country for isolationism. Uh, in the way that there is in the United States.